welcome to our kids' service. We're so excited for you to see everything that we have for you. But before we do that, we need you to stand up, make some room, because we're gonna jump into some worship. Hey kids, let's continue to open our hearts and worship the Lord as we sing Undefeated. The fight is on, I'll hold my ground. I'm gonna crash the lies of the enemy. I won't back down, cause I'm not alone. With you, my God, I'll conquer. Good workout. Ooh. Oh, hi kids. I'm so glad you're here as we gear up one last time to run the race. This series has been all about growing in our faith, which is more than having a lot of Bible information, but having a commitment to put a plan into practice. Each week, we've gone through practicing our faith by reading God's word, praying to him consistently, talking about him with our friends, and living out that faith every day. Our big answer is going to get us started today. And if you don't know what the big answer is, the big answer is the answer to the big question. 
This is the one you should get from the important adult in your life. And that is, what did you learn in kids' church today? Our big answer for today is, practice living for God. And our memory verse this week comes from the book of 1 Timothy. And it says, training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. There was a time when Jesus rode into Jerusalem the week before Passover, and the crowds were excited. But the religious leaders, not so much. In fact, all week they sent men to try to trap Jesus with trick questions. But every time, Jesus gave them a wise answer that caught them off guard. Jesus knew that the religious leaders were a pretty prideful bunch. They only wanted people, well, to listen to them. Jesus even warned the crowds about them. He said in Mark, chapter 12 verse 38 to watch out for the teachers of the law they like to walk around in long robes they like to be greeted with respect in the market they love to have the most important seats in the synagogues they also love to have the places of honor at dinners they take over the houses of widows they say long prayers to show off one day, Jesus and his disciples visited the temple. Jesus sat across from the place where people would bring their temple offerings. He watched the crowd put money into the offering boxes. Many rich people gave large amounts, but a poor widow came and put two very small copper coins. They were really only worth maybe a few pennies. It might seem like just a couple of coins isn't a big deal. But Jesus saw what this woman gave, and he was blown away by her offering. He asked his disciples to come to him, listen to what he had to tell them. In Mark chapter 12, verse 43, Jesus said, what I'm about to tell you is true. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. They all gave a lot because, well, they're rich. But she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Let's think about this for a second. Let's say while an offering bucket is being passed, you gave, well, a good amount of money. Maybe paper money. But that was really wasn't all you had. I mean, in fact, you had a uh, lot more. Yeah. Oh. And then another person comes, but they only give two pennies. They put two pennies in, but they have nothing left. So who gave more? That's right, the other person. And Jesus knew that. He knew that those two coins were all that the woman had to live on. And she had decided to give them as an offering to God. It was a way she could worship God and show how much she trusted him. She was a widow, which means her husband had died. So she must have been through a lot of difficult things in her life. But still, she chose to trust God and live for Him. Even though the wealthy people gave impressive amounts of money, Jesus knew that they had a lot of money to begin with. So it was easy for them to give some of it when they had so much left. Oh. <laughs> For them, it was as simple as a drop in the bucket. But the poor widow had almost nothing, and she chose to give everything. Jesus saw what was in her heart. He knew that she had done 
What she had done was an act of worship to God. He could see that her pennies were far more than the rich man's gold. This woman showed us what it really means to truly live for God. And we can follow her examples. We can live for God every day when we put what we believe into action. So before you do something, first stop and ask yourself if this will honor God. Look at the way Jesus lived and treated people and follow his example. After all, the way we live our lives can help others see how much God loves them too. We've got a really good plan to follow as we grow stronger in our relationship with God. We can take time to hear from God by reading the Bible or doing a fun devotional. We can pray and spend time connecting with God anytime, anywhere. And we can talk to others about what we believe and ask questions. All of this helps us walk out what our big answer says. Practice living for God. One of the best plans that we can make is to commit to an ongoing relationship with Jesus. God shows us send Jesus to take care of our sins. But there is something we need to do first, and that's taking a step to invite him into your heart. Sin is what keeps us separated. And until we say we're sorry for our sins and ask Jesus into our hearts, we aren't a part of God's family. So I want everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. And if you're here today and you'd like to make Jesus your best friend and start following him, would you just say this prayer with me? Just repeat after me and say, Dear God, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. Jesus, I give you my life. Be my Lord and my very best friend. In your name I pray, amen. We love you so much and we can't wait to see you next week. Whew, I need a water. Mm. What a great workout. It's time for Memory Verse Breakdown! Hey kids, today we're gonna break down this week's Memory Verse. Are you ready? Okay, here's this week's Memory Verse. You think you got it? Try saying it out loud. All right, let's take some words away. You think you still got it? Try saying it out loud again. All right, let's bring those words back and see how you did. Did you get it right? Awesome. Well, that's this week's Memory Verse Breakdown. How'd you do? Memory Verse Breakdown! Hey there, everyone. Who's ready to have a race right here, right now? Ooh, I know I am. Okay, here's how it will work. There will be five laps. Each lap requires you to answer a question about a book of the Bible. For each question, you'll be given two actions to choose from. One action represents the correct answer, and one action represents the wrong answer. If you choose the wrong action, then please take a seat and cheer your teammates on. If you choose the right answer, you're still racing and can move on to the next question. Everybody got it? Good! 
Go ahead and jump to your feet. Let's get this race started. To complete lap number one, you must answer this question. Is the book of Genesis from the Old Testament or the New Testament? Wave your hands over your head for Old Testament or jump up and down for New Testament. Time's up. Genesis is in the Old Testament. If you were waving your hands, you finished the first lap. If you were jumping, please take a seat. To complete lap number two, you must answer this question. Is the book of Revelation from the Old Testament or the New Testament? Spin in a circle for Old Testament or hop on one foot for New Testament. Up. Revelation is in the New Testament. If you were hopping on one foot, you finished two laps. Only three more to go. Here's the question for lap number three. Is the book of Ruth from the Old Testament or the New Testament? Do jumping jacks for Old Testament or flap your arms like a bird for New Testament? Time's up! Ruth is in the Old Testament! Everyone doing jumping jacks is still in the race! All you flapping birds out there, please take a seat. Here's the question for the fourth lap. Is the book of Micah from the Old Testament or the New Testament? Spin in a circle for Old Testament or jump up and down for New Testament. Time's up. Micah is in the Old Testament. If you are spinning in circles, you are probably super dizzy, but you made it to the final lap. You've just got one more question to answer to win the race. Is the book of Jude from the Old Testament or the New Testament? Flap your arms like a bird for Old Testament or jump up and down for New Testament. Up. Jude is in the New Testament. If you were jumping, then you can keep jumping for joy because you just won gold. Woohoo! What an exciting race. Ooh, I'm so pumped. I think I'm going to go run a marathon. Oh, no. <laughs> except, ouch, I, I think I just pulled something. Uh, uh, maybe I better go ice this. Anyway, congratulations to all our winners. Thanks for playing, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. Before you leave, have that important delta in your life. Go to lifechurchgreenbay.com forward slash kids where you can grab your Kids Connect card and there you can discuss the big answer, your memory verse, and even more. We love you so much and have a great week.